Hello, my name is Jim Sinesco, and I'm the Vice President with AFC International. Today I'm going to uh, do a review, and basically this will be your guide uh, for the maintenance use, and um, just a little bit of theory on the BTS 101. AFC, many years ago, produced the, the bump test uh, BTS 101 to do a variety of things, namely one to bump test gas detection instruments prior to use. So we're going to get a little bit of that because that's kind of the most important thing. Being a safety engineer, I was a safety engineer uh, many, many moons ago. I was in the deep tunnel projects in Chicago. Uh, my main job was to go underground and do detection with monitors prior to let, letting the workers go down into the tunnel to do their work. So I was kind of a glorified canary. So I kind of have a little bit of knowledge in this. Um, but I've been fortunate also over the last 30 years to be involved with gas detection, air monitoring, instrumentation uh, with either with a manufacturer or a distributor like AFC um, and now a manufacturer um, and distributor of this product as well with our other products that we represent. But to me, you know, safety is the number one concern here. And the number one thing is that we have to make sure, doubly sure, that we check our gas detection instruments Regardless of make, model, manufacturer, we could be MSA, we could be BW, we could be Draeger, we could be Ray Systems, uh, we could be MSA, you name it. They're all very similar in a lot of ways. There are some differences, of course, but they're all very similar in the fact that they can fail at any given time. And nobody has made an, made an instrument right now that can actually tell you exactly when that instrument's working or not working at 100% of the time. So although we try to get better and better, we try to come up with new technologies, that day has not come. Uh, and so years of people using gas monitors for a variety of reasons, one being confined space entry, others just for plant-wide monitoring, we've learned that things can go wrong. And because things can go wrong, this whole notion of testing your gas meter and calibrating has come out. Obviously, uh, not everybody's listening and heeding this because I still go to plants. I still, in my travels, find places that don't do any bump testing whatsoever, and they just do gas calibrations, whatever the manufacturer tells them. Some will tell them every month that they're a really good sales guy. They'll tell them every year, uh, and some will say every six months. Although it does sound very good that, hey, I only have to calibrate once a year or maybe never. It's a great way to sell instruments, but it's really that, is that the proper way to do it? And in fact, I would tell you that any manufacturer that says that is absolutely crazy. Because as soon as you open up their manual, you open up maybe the front page, could be in the back page, could be in the appendix, could be somewhere in the middle. I guarantee you and bet you that it will say, bump test or test with gas prior to use. These manufacturers know they can fail at any time and they're not going to be stupid enough not to put that in the manual. But the salespeople, unfortunately, are trying to tell you, oh no, because that's a headache. It's a headache and it's costly to, to do your bump and your cowling. So about 10, 12, 13 years ago, I can't exactly remember when I came up with the bump test 101, I said, wait a minute, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a way that we can take all the negatives out of uh, the bumping of gas detection. In other words, testing it with gas prior use. There's gotta be an easy, easy method that there'd be basically no excuses not to do it, right? So, you know, we got smart. We started thinking, let's bump test prior to use. That's great. And what are we gonna need to do? Oh, we need to get a regulator. We need to get a cylinder of gas and we have to either get this from the safety office. We have to go get this from maintenance. And if we forget to shut our valve off, we lose all the gas and it's a very expensive lecture bottle um, for cow gas. So I understand the reasoning. I understand the reasoning that it's maybe too complicated too. Ah, it's too complicated to have the guys on the line or the workers go out and, and calibrate. I don't want them messing around with the gas meters. Um, they could screw something up. No, I'm going to take care of it. But you know what? I go on vacations. I'm not there all day long. I, I have one a shift and I go home. So when I'm not here, I'm the guy taking care of the meters, what happens to our gas detection program? What happens if I retire? What happens if I quit and move on? That one person now has got the whole responsibility and he's now not with the company anymore. So again, I put all these things together and, and thinking as a safety per professional, I'm like, you know what? We can do this quickly. We can do this easily. We can do this efficiently. 
and we can do it for a very economical amount of money spent and we can do it right. So the, the bump testing station was born, the BTS 101 I call it, this is our first model, the 101 um, is the original. And again, the premise on this, the whole point of this is you quickly uh, and efficiently, okay, that's the key, and safely, that's the other thing, and virtually bump test any make manufacturer of gas detector on the market today. I wanted a universal bump station. So what you have here with the Bump Station 101, or the BTS 101, is a universal gas monitor uh, uh, bump test station that will test your gas meters. It doesn't matter if it's a diffusion unit, like here's a, a Race Systems Toxi Pro for carbon monoxide, no pump, just a diffusion. Here's a Draeger XM2000. Once again, it's a multi-gas meter, combustibles, oxygen, COH2S, a real common confined space, but a diffusion mode. Here's another version, uh, Q-Ray 2. This is a multi-gas, LEL02COH2S, very classic uh, confined space monitor. This one has a pump. Now, if you've watched my other videos that are on our website or you know, just know me, um, I'm a real big fan of internal pump units. And using pumps for confined space is really the only way to do it, right? We have to extend our reach. We have to be able to get down, pull a sample from a confined space and uh, know about it prior to going in. That, that just makes sense, right? Whether we're going upward, sideways, downward, we want to extend that reach. So by using a pump that's permanently attached, it makes it just easier. Yes, the Drager unit can and other manufacturers can add pumps on there and that's fine too. Um, but the key thing here, the main, main thing, whatever method you're going to use as far as whatever instrument, if it's going to be confined space, you're going to use a pump, you should bump test using the pump. Not bump test the instrument and then use an attachable pump. Use the device exactly how you're going to use it in the field. You also will notice this race system has a filter on it. You want to use the filter when you do the bump test. So basically boil it down to this. However way you're going to use your meter in the field, you want to do when we're doing a bump test, that's how we want to do it. And we want to check with everything the way it's going to be out in the field. Okay, so that's the number one thing. Nowadays, a lot of instrument companies make cal stations specifically for a particular model or several models of their instrument. These are great. We sell them all the time. We represent Ray, Honeywell, Draeger. These are great. Highly recommend them. They're very expensive but it, it, they do give you quite a bit of information. A lot of them um, can give you data logging capabilities and records of this. The Bump Station 101, the BTS 101, is really not that sophisticated. It's very quick and thorough, but there's no real way uh, on board here to store that data. So the BTS 101 is a simple system. It's gonna rely on you to either do written log, have a log sheet here, or most instruments these days have a data logger and they'll actually record that bump. Now, if you go on a, on a you download that data, you will see a very interesting thing. If you've got an instrument that's got five, four or five sensors, when you do a bump test and you bump test them all at the same time, that data logger is going to look strange. You're going to see peaks of different gases on top of each other all at the same time. Now, I can guarantee you in real reality out in the field, gases don't work like that. You're not going to have them all at one time. So you can easily be see, can see if someone's been bumping on the data logger so we really don't really need that capability to verify yeah it's nice to have and again if, if you only have one meter in the in the plant that's great but if you are like other co companies many out there they have contractors coming in bigger facilities they use different monitors different instruments um, the universal bump station is a, a much more efficient easy way and you don't have to worry about all the different makes and models okay now i'll show you how to how to change it and modify it um, for each instrument uh, as we go along here. Now, one thing, um, well, every BTS 101 or any, or any of the, the, the multiple of uh, different types of devices we have, not just the, the 101, we have many different types uh, for different missions, different applications, um, you do get a tube fitting uh, connector so we can modify um, the bump station to work with any manufacturer unit. So again, the whole idea here though, is we take an instrument, whether diffusion or pumped, and we effectively and efficiently um, do a bump test. If you look at most manufacturers' res response curves, you will find that instruments should have a T90. That's 90% of time, that much time it takes to get 90% of true concentration. 
anywhere between 25 and 60 seconds over a three year, two, three, four year lifespan of that sensor. So when we set up our bump station as standard, we will let the gas come out once we push this button for about 30 seconds. That's standard. That can be changed. And for certain gas sensors like ammonia, um, and in some cases cyanide, hydrogen cyanide, sulfur dioxide, we need to increase that because sensor response is a little bit slower for those gas sensors. So we have that ability to change that. Or you have that ability to change it for whatever your corporate policy is or your company's policy for confined space and bumping. So we, we did give you some flexibility there too. As far as the flow rate coming off of it, well, most manufacturers, if you're going to calibrate a Ray Systems gas meter, they'll usually give you a, a regulator. This isn't a Ray regulator, but it's very similar. A half a liter per minute. That's a fixed flow. It's the amount of how much the gas is coming out of the cylinder. Some, like uh, industrial scientific, might be uh, one liter per minute. Um, and then others might be like 200 cc's or 0.2 liters per minute, like MSA. It really depends on the make and manufacturer. So all we want you to do is we don't want you to, 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 to make your own rules here. We want you to abide by the manufacturer, what they recommend as far as the flow rate. Now inside, when I open up the cabinet a little bit later in this segment, um, I'll show you where we can adjust the flow rate for different makes and manufacturers of instruments. But by and large, most manufacturers will accept a half a liter per minute um, you know, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, half a liter, um, and that'll be acceptable for doing bump testing. Okay, so it's not going to be super critical, but we do want you to follow the manufacturer's thing. Now, the whole point of the bump station, too, by the way, is, is just to fill in the gaps between what the manufacturer recommends you do a hard calibration. The difference between a bump, st bump test and a calibration is that a calibration, when we do that, whether it's yearly or monthly or quarterly, we're actually physically making adjustments electronically to adjust for the loss and sensitivity of those sensors. It's a, it's a, you're making a change, you're making an adjustment. A bump test basically is just seeing if those sensors do need to have that adjustment made. You know, the idea is if we hit it with gas and we gotta go for 30 to 60 seconds, has it made any differential or any change if the sensors drifted or moved at all? If they have within a certain amount of tolerance, then we can do a full calibration. So the bump station and the bump test theory really is, where are we in that, that sensor life? And where, is, is it being more sensitive, less sensitive? Are we losing sensitivity over time because of the, the environment that we're working at? And the critical thing here is that, is that every environment, every application, every plant, every place we take meters is different. Different environmental, different gases and vapors, different users, different humidity. These are all things. So it's very, very hard for me. And again, I sell these products. I used to work for a manufacturer. It's hard for me to just say, nope, once a year calibrations, once a month calibrations, once every quarter calibration. It's very difficult. What I would say is that we need to establish that pattern. We need to come up on our own based on our site specific situation that we have. That just makes more sense to me. Maybe where we're working is very humid. We've got machines that are spewing out a lot of humidity. Maybe that's affecting the instrument. Maybe there's background gases and vapors other than the target gases that we're trying to, uh, to detect that cause the sensors to uh, read wrong or drift or get offset in some way. So there's lots of things, lots of factors, lots of variables. So the thought is, again, we come back to this, let's bump test prior to use. Let's just do it. A simple, quick 20, 30 second bump check should be easy for anybody. Now, I would agree. We don't want just everybody getting inside and, and messing around with the instrument. So in this case, the bump station 101, the BTS 101 and all of our bump stations is really only for use of bump testing in between the recommended cows. If you've been trained by myself or you're one of our customers, I can train you and teach you how to do calibrations using it. But the main thrust uh, and the main purpose of the bump test station is to do bump, step, uh, bump testing and not calibrating. So that's something I wanted to clear. We get a lot of people asking, can I calibrate on it? Well, certainly you can, but that's not the point. We want to, we want to follow the manufacturers. We always want to use their recommendations, of course, and we do not want to vary from that. All right. How we bump test diffusion instruments and pumped instruments is two different things. And, and I've seen a lot of things in my travels over the 30 some years I've been doing this gas detection um, instrumentation work that um, I, every year, every month I come home, 
I write something and I blog about it, I talk about it, and I do videos just to make sure that everyone's doing it properly. I still see a lot of people not doing bumps uh, or doing it wrong. If you have a pumped instrument, you do not want to use a fixed flow we call positive pressure regulator. Positive pressure regulators force gas out, and if we connect this directly to the instrument, even if we have a bad pump, that gas could get pushed through, hit to the sensors, get to the sensors, and pass. You disconnect, you go in the field, if that pump's not pulling anything, you're not going to get any detection, and it's a very unsafe situation. I've seen too many problems with that. Um, likewise, if we take a diffusion instrument and we bump it, a positive pressure fixed flow regulator is fine. But, but, if we're putting it into a sample pump of some sort, this is not the Draeger pump, but it looks just like it. We put it in there and that pump turns on. What if the pump's not pulling? I would rather have you use the pump, use the device, how you're going to use it in the field when you do your bump. So for diffusion instruments, it's just a simple matter of taking the calibration adapter that comes with every gas meter. This one happens to be for the, the Toxi Ray Pro a diffusion instrument. And through those series of adapters that we give you with every kit, with every uh, bump station, you adapt it. And we connect up to our instrument just like this. At this point, push the button, and the gas comes out. And again, this is set for 30 seconds. I have 100 ppm carbon monoxide in here, and you can see, maybe you can't, but I'll, trust me, 70, 80, getting up to 90 part per million within about 10, 15, 20 seconds. Remember I told you the T90 number? We should be in alarm. We already are in alarm here, 100 ppm. When the light goes out, we can disconnect. Now we can go out, once this clears, go out into the field. We know that that sensor is going to work. We also know that the gas is not going to leak. It shut down the system. And it's all set for the next person to come by and do a bump. And it took oh, what, all of 20, 30 seconds. Connect up and push the button. Very simple, very easy. Anybody can do it. You know, you're almost a fool not doing it, right? For pumped instruments, it's a little different. We just can't connect up an adapter and force that gas in like I was telling you about. So for a pump, we're going to adapt the bump station with what we call a calibration T. Now the theory of a T is we are going to connect up the instrument on one leg of the T. Say our pump is running at a half a liter per minute. This end is where the gas comes out. It's going to come down the line. The instrument's going to pull at its own rate. That's what we want it to do. We don't want to force it with that pump to pull it. And then any excess gas is going to come out the other side. So this means that when we set our instrument, I'm going to show you how to do that in the next segment. When we set the bump station, we have to set the regulator flow greater than the pump draw of the instruments that we're using. Now, Ray runs at about half a liter per minute. So we usually set that uh, bump station up at about 0.6 to 0.8, a little bit more just to make sure. So here's the theory. Gas comes out, instrument pulls out, the instrument's pulling at half a liter, this is going at 0.8, excess goes out the other end. So we always want to check when we push this button, we want to check that flow, it's flowing outward. If we do not do that, then our instrument's pulling greater than the feed from the, from the bump station, and we're going to pull sample back in through this third leg. What happens then? Well, we take the gas that we have in here, and we're basically diluting it. We're adding room air, just air, and cutting that concentration. But you will also fail if you do that too much. So it's kind of a fail-safe system there. So really, the, the, using a T is very neat because it's a simple, easy way to check your pump. If you do a bump test and that pump is not pulling, it won't pass a, uh, a bump. And that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that that pump is good. And then you wouldn't use it. You go use another meter, get it replaced, whatever. But the one thing is you're not in the, in the confined space. You're not doing monitoring in the plant. It could kill you or cause some major, major damage and serious injury. So the T is very important. You just have to make sure that it's flowing outward on the third leg. All right, so I'm all connected here. Got this line coming through. Inside here, I have concentrations of multi-gas. This is a multi-gas sensor. 
I've got LEL, combustible gas, at 50% methane. I've got 100 part per million carbon monoxide. I got a carbon monoxide sensor in here. I got an H2S at 25 part per million. I got an uh, H2S sensor in here. And I have oxygen concentrations of 17, and I have an oxygen sensor in my meter. So with one button push, 20, 30 seconds, I'll be done. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. Push the button. The gas is flowing. I'm flowing at 0.8 liters per minute. It's coming down the tube. Excess. Yep, I can feel the excess coming out. Instrument's pulling at its own rate. I look at my meter and go, wow. All of them are an alarm. That was pretty quick. You can wait if you want. I like to wait till the 30 seconds is over. If not, that's fine. You can disconnect. We're just going to wait up here for a second. Instrument's an alarm. The unit shuts off on its own. We disconnect. Once the instrument comes back down to zero and everything's back to normal, go out and do your work. You've effectively, quickly, safely, efficiently bump tested this instrument. And now we know in our mind, we saw it happen. We did it ourselves. We know that this instrument's working. That leads me to another thing too. You know, some of these automated systems, they're great. You know, these expensive automated systems. Again, I told you, we, we sell them to a lot of clients and they're, they're wonderful devices. However, it's usually one person doing it or the machine is so automated, you just put it in its, its cradle and you push a button. That's great. You come back, it passed. You're not really interacting in that process. All you're doing is grabbing the meter. Oh, it passed. Okay, good. I move on. With a bump test 101, we're actually actively seeing and looking and taking participation in that monitor and the, and the good health of that monitor. And I think that's very important. Um, again, I like automation. I like things that are automatic, automatic and easy to use. But sometimes too easy is not the way to go. So um, especially if you have mixed instruments throughout a plant, I think the BTS 101 gives you a much better feel for you as a user understanding what you're doing. And again, AFC includes training with all the instruments we sell. So we, we drum that into your head. We show you. We want you to be confident with the meters. So the bump station really gives you that, that confidence that you see it, not just an instrument telling you that it's working or somebody else who's working on a meter and say, here, take this meter. It's good to go. Really? Hmm. Okay, I take your word for it. Good and bad. I like to see it myself. So I guess I'm old, old school. So that was a, uh, the Ray Systems Q-Ray 2. Um, to do a Drager, Drager, this is a, an XM2000. They have a new unit coming out called the XM2500 that we'll be replacing this, but it's the same basic unit with some enhancements. And disconnect the T, put on the calibration cradle with my adapter. Just that simple. Put the instrument in the adapter shoe, hit the button, and just wait. Again, that timer set for 30 seconds. We're going to look and see the responses of the instrument. Very quick. Right now I'm looking at all sensors are in alarm. It's been about 10, 12 seconds. I could choose to, to disconnect and consider that a pass. Some companies want you to go to like 20% or 10% of full value. We'll just wait. It shuts off automatically. I look. Yep, all an alarm. I disconnect, and off I go. Take the adapter off, put my T back on for the next pump unit that's going to come around. Reset my monitor. Yep, I'm all good. Now i got the confidence when I go in the field, this is going to work great for me, and I know that I'm going to be safe. That's what the bump station um, gives you, that confidence that it's going to work. Okay. So how do we check the flow? Obviously, I told you the flow is really important, right? If it's a pumped unit, we have to make sure that that flow rate is greater than the draw of the strongest pump. Um, so we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to adjust that. If you're using a man, another manufacturer like Drager, it's a diffusion instrument, they're going to say a half a liter per minute. Our MSA is going to be at, at 0.2. Okay? So you need to be able to make that adjustment. You don't want to waste gas by having too much, but yet you want to have just enough to do the job properly. So inside the instrument, there's these two tabs on, the, on the either end of the corner, and then there's a safety triangle. It's a special tool. I'll open up the cabinet, and you'll be able to see a couple things here. You're going to see 
the regulator, the cylinder. We have a, a hose clamp that keeps it in place, for, keeps it stable. Timing mechanism with adjustable timing setup. Power supply, we're taking 110 power, converting it to 12 volt using a, a 12 volt solenoid. So we have that line charged, ready to go. As soon as we push that button, solenoid opens up, allowing the gas to come through. Very simple, easy, simple concept, right? Simple, easy. Adjusting the timer here. Adjusting the regulator flow here. So what we're gonna do with the door open, we're gonna close it down just for a second to show you the flow. We're gonna hit the button. We're gonna mark where we are, 0.8, and by using our regulator and by screwing in, increases it. Loosening it, decreases it. Where you wanna set it, say 0.8 or 0.7, we set it. Lock it down. And you are done, you are good to go. Now again, this box is NEMA 4X. It can be put in virtually any environment except for it is not an explosion-proof classified unit. So we do not want to put this in an explosion-proof or a designated explosion-proof or combustible area. Um, so we want to keep it in safe zones, areas that are not immediately in the production area. Um, although it is dust splash watertight, um, it does not have that EX or intrinsically safe reading. Um, so we want to be cognizant of that, be very careful. Um, there is a vent at the bottom um, down here in case the gas cylinder opens, it would vent out. Now, some would say, well, isn't that a combustible environment if we had gas building up in there, you have ex explosion uh, electronics in there, you know, power. No, because the gas cylinder does not contain any combustible material and it would vent out, so we're going to be fine. You can actually take a big lighter to the, to the uh, end of the flow regulator and not have any problems. So, um, not an issue there. So we do keep it nice and clean um, from the environment and you'll be fine and uh, should get years of, of good uh, use out of it. So again, AFC International's BTS-101, that's a gas detection, universal gas detection bump test station, can virtually test anybody's gas meter, single gas, multi-gas, could be MSA, BW, Drager, Ray, Industrial Scientific, you name it. We can bump test it very safely, efficiently. So hopefully I've, I've showed you a few things. If you need more information, go to our website, www.afc.com. Um, I'm sorry, www.afcintl.com. I'm going to get ahead of myself here. Um, or you can give us a call at 800-952-3293. I thank you for, for uh, watching. And if there's anything you need, questions or anything, or you want to have a product demonstration, give us a call. And uh, we'll be more than happy to help you. Thank you and stay safe.